Watching CarMax pregame. CarMax, the way it should be. And Steph just... Steph is running into the front court. <laughs> Draymond <laughs> finds him. Another three. Oh. Got it! 62! 62! And he actually surpasses his buddy, Clay Thompson. No! Clay had that 60 spot against Indy. Oh, yeah. Big game, Dame. Can't dish it out and not be able to take it. Dame actually dropped his career high of 61 against the Warriors, and Steph came back and did him one better. What else <laughs> do we have? We got something from Clay. Jeez. Welcome to the club, dog. Hey, 60 for Clay. The only two guards in the last 30 years for the Warriors to do that to drop 60 is Clay and Steph. So tipping his hat to his teammate Steph Curry. And the performance was unlike anything that we've seen in some time. Welcoming you back. There is Zeke, there's Coach. Coach, starting Zeke, started with you, obviously playing the point guard position. I saw you post on social media about Steph. Tell me your thoughts watching Steph put on that show last night. Zeke can't hear me right now, so we'll just bring this conversation to Coach. Coach, obviously you're paying attention. We've seen what Steph has been going through this season, a lot of chirping, saying does he still have it? Are the Warriors going to make the playoffs? And then he explodes for 62. What did you see last night? I saw Steph Curry reengaged. Look, he's still averaging 30-plus points a game and putting up numbers, but that, that spark, that spark in his eyes, that determination, had not seen that early in the season. But the other night against Portland, and you said it, Damian Lillard had dropped 61 on him before Steph Curry came back, and they needed a game like this from Steph Curry. Andrew Wiggins, Kelly Oubre, James Wiseman, they needed to know their leader was back because we all have forgotten how special a player Steph Curry has been because we haven't seen him in a while, out of sight, out of mind. But he reminded us that he's still one of the top five, six players in the league. He proved it last night. And I think you're going to see the Warriors kind of take off a little bit after a performance like that because Andrew Wiggins is quietly starting to play better. Kelly Oubre is finding himself. Draymond Green is back. And James Wiseman is looking like we all thought he would be a very good player. So Steph Curry having a game like that is going to energize his Warriors team. It's going to get them back on track because we know it's going to be a difficult season without Clay. But we still expect this Warriors team with, with Steph, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins to compete for a playoff spot. They have a plethora of talent, just like Roy Jones once said. Y'all must have forgot some of y'all. Clearly did out there. We saw what was popping on Twitter. Zeke, I saw you on social media posting about Steph Curry. Your thoughts about his 62-point performance. Hey, I didn't forget. I, I mean, <laughs> my, my two favorite guards to watch play, Steph Curry and Kyrie Irving. And every time they, they play, I'm, I'm excited. And when Steph got into his bag of tricks, I, I, I knew I was like, oh, he getting ready to go off. Because you could, you could tell when he started shimmying. When he got the little, the little floater in the lane, the little step back, and then it was, then it was on. Then you saw Draymond get the, the, the Steph Curry eye, like, like Earl Curitan used to say. Uh, you know, Mo Cheeks had the Dr. J eye. The only person he saw was Dr. J. Well, Draymond <laughs> said, the only person I'm seeing right now is Steph Curry, and everybody just started picking for him. And the little fella, I call him little fella, but he's bigger than me. He's taller than me. <laughs> but, but, man, he got hot, and he went to shaking and shimmying. The only thing that, that wasn't good was that Sam, you know, wrote there were no fans in the building. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you'd have had some fans in the building, he might have had would have been playing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> it would have been okay with me. Because he could have took that record Sam, that's been hung on my head off me. <laughs> it would have been okay he, with me. He, Sam, he shot one, and it looked like he shot it and put his whole hand in the rim <laughs> and followed through. <laughs> oh, man. It, Come it on, was, Steph. It was beautiful. We needed about, what, 20 more points? Yeah, we, we did. 20 you know, more, I, Steph. You disappointed. Sam, me. I, tweeted, I, tweeted, I tweeted last year. I was like, you know, I miss watching Steph Curry play. And then if, if you can imagine if Steph and Clay – would have been in a bubble last year oh. and how that bubble was set up. Oh, you know they would have been clowning up in that bubble, man. You, they, Because you had guys getting 40, 50 like it wasn't nothing. Steph and Clay in the bubble? Oh, that would have been a problem. That would have been a problem. <laughs> man, it would have. I would have loved to have seen it. I think a lot of fans would have loved Breaking news from Brooklyn Nets. Kevin Durant will miss at least the next four games due to COVID-19.
protocols due to contract tracing. Durant had the coronavirus in May. However, he hasn't tested positive in recent tests. And there it is. You are now rocking with the best Roe Parish here in Studio B. And it is the CarMex pregame show. And of course, we're here to engage, enlighten, and entertain with the coach of the year, Sam Mitchell, the Hall of Famer, Isaiah Thomas, joining us as well. So immediate reaction. Zeke, I'll start with you. When you hear this news about Kevin Durant, seeing the recent struggles that the Nets have had, they lost their last two, they're coming off that loss against Washington. What are your immediate thoughts hearing this? Well, the, the first thing is you, you're concerned about his health and you and you wishing him well and you hope that uh, he's healthy and uh, that that the virus is, um, you know, it's not it's not attacking him. Uh, and then from a from a basketball standpoint, uh, you, you know, the, the, the Nets are going to some nights be without him, some nights be without Kyrie. So this is a good time for them to practice and make some adjustments and seeing what kind of team they really have in terms of their bench strength. Now they're missing two people in terms of Durant and, and, and Dinwiddie, who's also out. So they get a chance to really test their bench strength. And also for, for Nash, this is a chance for him to test his coaching style, his coaching ability, and experiment a little bit also. Coach, just looking at you, and Zeke just mentioned Steve Nash, obviously his first year as a head coach. He has a lot of support around him, but these are just some of the challenges that come yes. when you're a rookie as a head coach. Welcome to the coaching fraternity, Steve. Look, <laughs> it's tough, and what Isaiah is saying, when life gives you lemon, make lemonade. So look, you don't want this to happen because the Nets, let's be honest, they've been struggling. All right, they haven't hit the floor running like we thought they would with all this talent. So again, Steve Nash got something else to deal with. He's got to now figure out how to incorporate this team and keep them moving forward without Kevin Durant for the next four days. And then once he comes back, then he's lost conditioning. He's lost timing. So you got to try to get all that back in Kevin Durant and then incorporate him back into this team. Again, we got to remember, no extended preseason, no training camp, so to speak of. And then practice time is limited. So this is a bad time for Brooklyn to have this. But to Isaiah point, Steve Nash got to look at this as is what it is. And he got to start looking at this team and figuring out ways to push the buttons to get this team to start playing well. It's not about KD and Kyrie. We know those guys are going to answer the bell. You got to get all these other players who used to play in significant minutes and having different roles, get them acclimated and get them playing well. So let's take a look at the next five games that are on the schedule for the Brooklyn Nets. A couple of playoff opponents when you see the Utah Jazz, the TNT game features Philadelphia, and then you see some lesser opponents or teams that are struggling. Zeke, you look at that schedule. What would your approach be? Obviously, you have plenty of uh, experience as a head coach in the NBA. What is your approach if you're Steve Nash? I, I, would, I, would, I would still go back and try to root myself uh, in, in defense and see if I can find a a defensive formula that my team can adapt to and start establishing a defensive identity. Uh, when you look at that coaching staff, and it's, it's a coaching staff that, that's been rooted in an offensive identity over a period of years. When you look at D'Antoni, Nash, Stoudemire, they, they understand how to play offensively in this league and score. What, what they've all been criticized for is not being a great defensive team and having a defensive mindset in their playing days. So now you got all three of them together on the bench. Can they develop a defensive identity that the Nets are going to be able to sell and be combined with their great offensive punch? Right now, the, the Nets sitting fourth in the Atlantic. They are currently ninth in the Eastern Conference, sitting at three and four. Can't wait to see what happens, how they make those adjustments. They have been struggling, but Luca the Don has been struggling as well. So far, that three ball. It just ain't been falling. So far, he's shooting 31% from the field. Take a look at the numbers they are on your screen. And that's actually an improvement because just a couple of days ago, he was shooting 9.5%. JaVel McGee, yes, that JaVel McGee had made more threes. Slow your roll. I'm just saying, earlier in the week. But, but he, Slow he your roll. He stepped break. since then. Okay, so, so he's one of three guards in the last 30 years to go to be all NBA in the second season. Coach, what needs to change with Luka and his three? Well, we already know. We talked about it. Look, he was out of shape. And last year, Luka didn't shoot the three ball great. And that's something that he's going to have to continue to improve. But what's going to help Luka and the rest of this Dallas Maverick team is when they eventually get Kristoff Porzingis back. Everyone is loading up on Luka. He's not in tip-top shape. And when you're not in tip-top shape and teams are loading up on you because your Robin is on the shelf right now in Porzingis,
đứng chung ô chờ đợi kìa tia nắng mai nào hé môi and just think about what Przingis brings to this team another three point shooter so he brings space defense rim protection so until they get him back a lot of Dallas Mavericks are going to struggle but Luka part of his problem was conditioning and he can play his way back in the shape but I'm not really worried about his shot bro because it's not always how many you make is when you make them and we know he can make shots at the right time yeah we've seen him make plenty of shots at the right time especially last season in the bubble z coming to you i know you were very high on this dallas combo talking about luka and kp last season as a superstar right now in this moment in the nba you've obviously been there what type of weight is luka feeling right now not having his sidekick in the lineup well he he's feeling a lot of weight however you know you you have to be a little disappointed that your best player MVP candidate comes to training camp or comes back for the regular season and he's not in shape uh you know that that very rarely happens on a basketball team and and that very rarely happens in a league where the the MVP of the league uh you know comes back and and he's not in tip top shape Now we've seen Harden do it. Now we've seen Luka do it. But when you compare and you contrast those two, you know, to a, a LeBron James or a Steph Curry, or you know, we just talked about a Steve Nash who was, you know, back-to-back -back MVP of the league. Those guys come into camp and they are in shape and ready to go. The big guys like a Shaq can do that. But when you're talking about guard play and being out on the perimeter. Hey, you got to be in shape from day one, and the standard and the tone that he's setting for his team right now has got to be a little disappointing that he didn't show up in shape and ready to go. Well, someone who did show up in shape and ready to go has been the Wall Star, as I call him affectionately, John Wall, the five-time All Star, looking like that five-time All Star. You see the numbers that he put up in his first two games. There's a guy that you guys might know on the screen named Michael Jordan. Last players with 50 total points in the first two games after being gone for two plus seasons. John Wall and MJ, two Wizards at one time. So, Coach, I have to ask you this question: Just watching John Wall this season, how impressed have you been with him and how he's been able to return to that All-Star caliber player? Very. Bro, when you watch him play, his speed, his quickness, his awareness on the floor. Look at him right there defensively. And this is the thing: John Wall was always one of the fastest guys in the league, but he looks faster. And this is the thing. He understands who and what he is now. So you watch him play. He's taking shots that he's comfortable at. He's not jacking up a lot of threes. He's still that one-man fast break. And this is the thing. As the Houston Rockets players get used to playing with him, those guys are going to get out and run the wings. And John Wall is the best in the league is, is coming down on one side of the floor and throwing that hook pass unseen to the opposite corner for wide-open threes. He made a living with that and watched him with Bradley Beal. You still have three-point shooters in Houston. He's going to eventually do that in Houston once the other guys get in shape and start running with, y with John. Because one thing about John, if you don't run with him, he will leave you. Yes, indeed, he will. Beep, beep, just like the roadrunner. Now, there's four players in NBA history that have career averages of 19 and 9. The big O, Magic, John Wall, and the one and only Isaiah Thomas that's on our set. Zeke, you have plenty of experience playing this position at a very high level. Break down what you've seen so far from John Wall. I, I see that he A, he's healthy again. And now that he's healthy, speed comes into play. And he's been practicing his jump shot. So when you give him the three and you give him this much room, these are what you know Coach Versace used to call warm-up jump shots. Uh, you know, because they're bagging up off of him. And he likes to go left, so somebody didn't read the scouting report because when you give him the left left hand going down the lane, that's cash money all day. And again, watch on the screen and roll. He sets it up, takes his time, and again, you're going to get a warm-up jump shot because back up, nobody's there. I mean, these are shots that he's been practicing for the last two years. And then in transition, This is where he's really dangerous at. The speed, he can take the bump now. He trusts his body. He feels good about himself. He trusts his legs. And, you know, as a point guard and as a guard in this league, if your legs aren't healthy, then you have a little self-doubt. But right now, you can see that he's very comfortable 
with his legs, his leg strength, his body strength. So that gives him confidence. And he's playing, you know, like, like John. used to play in high school when we used to go scouting. Uh, he's, he's playing confident. He's having fun. And I think if Harden was to get back in shape, and Sam Mitchell said this earlier, and I'm going to echo what Sam said, this may be the best talent that Harden has played with if he gets back in shape. You got a wall, you got a woods, and you also got, uh, you know, the big fella that, that's getting back okay. in shape also. That's it. That's right. And and Zeke, it's interesting that you say that, and I love the fact that you're so cerebral. You understand exactly what we're about to talk about next. And, Coach, I'll direct this question to you. I want to have both gentlemen address it. But if you have a Wood, as you just spoke about, Zeke, and then you have John Wall, all these players that have been so talented, this undrafted guy right here who's averaging 23 and 10, he's just shooting over 55%. If you have Wall and Wood and company, will that entice Harden to want to stay in Houston? I know Steven Silas as the coach. I know he's hoping so. But it gives you a chance, bro, because this is the thing, the thing that, that you have to worry, think about. Inside that locker room. James Harden, when you watch him play, he's not playing like a guy that, that's disgruntled, that a guy that wants to leave. And when you watch this kid, Christian Wood, play, he is playing lights out. He's catching the lobs that James Harden is famous for throwing. He's running in transition. He's getting his feet set and knocking down jump shots. And this is the thing, and Zeke said it, once DeMarcus Cousin plays himself back into rhythm, not in shape, DeMarcus look good body-wise, but it takes big guys a little longer to get their rhythm and their timing back. Once you can put Wood and Cousins on the floor together with John Wall and James Harden and another, watch out because you're going to have size, you're going to have an inside-outside game, you're going to have a guy able to set screens and roll to the basket and open things up. And then what James Harden does is just lethal. So. He may want to reconsider. If they keep winning games, James Harden may quietly reconsider staying in Houston. Hey, Andre 3000 said it best. Reconsider, reconsider, Zeke. <laughs> bringing it back to you. Obviously, you're very familiar with the Detroit Pistons. You watched Wood and training captain last season. You saw how much potential that he had. We have seen it coming to fruition so far this season. When healthy, Harden in shape, everything working as it should in Houston, is this Rockets team a true threat to come out of the West? Absolutely they are. I mean, I, I, I remember uh, watching Wood in training camp, and I was sitting next to Malik Rose, and I, you know, and Malik and I was talking about how, how talented he was, and there was some thought about he may not even make the team. And I remember saying to Malik, uh, you know, this is one guy you, you may want to keep. And they found a way to keep him in Detroit, develop him, but when you look at Harden right now, and, and Sam, I'm going to throw this back to you. I don't know if if James Harden gets traded, I don't know if there's another team that fits more perfectly for him than Houston or a more talented team that he will find other than the one that he's playing on. Because wherever he goes, he's going to get traded for talent. So they're going to lose some talent. I don't know if he'll find a more talented team to get traded to than the one that he's currently on right now. The one he's currently on right now. Coach, go ahead, chime in, throw something in there before we go to break. Well, Zeke, you're right about that. The talent is there. Give Steven Siles a little more time to get this group together. But I like how James is playing right now. He's playing his way into shape. The Rockets are starting to play much better basketball and get comfortable with each other. And Zeke, you're right. If James Harden, if the Rockets can go on like a three, four, five game winning streak and take off, it may sway James Harden's opinion about leaving Houston. Right now on the outside looking in of the playoffs, but they are right in the right place to be with Coach Silas leading them. Now let's check it up. Crunchy time. Hey, we know all about Cole Anthony. Shout out to his daddy, Greg, getting into traffic. That floater drops looking good early. And let's take you to Philly, Philly. Maxie, what's popping? Stop, pop, shut him up, up and up shop. Philly down by three to the Hornets. 